everyone, I'm Kerry Scott, Early Learning Coordinator for the New Jersey State Museum. Welcome to Small Explorers. Today, I want to begin with our American Sign Language sign, respect. When we're signing the alphabet, the letter R is made by crossing your fingers and putting your thumb over your other two fingers. This can be a one-handed sign or you can make two of them to show more respect. So let's practice with our, with our first hand. Hold up two fingers, crisscross them. You're gonna take that sign, take it up to your forehead and bring it out. So respect. Or you can do it with two hands and go respect. Let's try that one more time. Ready, small explorers? Hold up your two fingers, crisscross them, respect. Friends, welcome to a much moved people. As you can see, we tend to keep the lights a little low in here. Some of the objects that you see on the wall are reproductions. That means they are traditionally made copies. Um, in this case, they were made by members of the Delaware Lenape tribe specifically for us to show here in the museum so that we could learn from them. Uh, we also have a few artifacts that are a few hundred years old, like our corn dollies. So these are made of fabric and corn husks and too much light can actually damage them, so we keep the light very low in here. Friends, the toys and games that we're looking at today are reproductions. They're traditionally made copies made by an artist. In, that, in this case, the artist is Jennifer Pachonic, who's a member of the Delaware Tribe of Indians, or the Lenape, now located down in Oklahoma. Jennifer comes from a whole family of artists who have been artists and crafters for generations. It was actually her mother and her aunt who made the, the regalia, um, the traditional clothing that we looked at just a moment ago. Jennifer teaches Delaware children in playing games at traditional events in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. And she made these to be used in this exhibition to help us teach about games played by Delaware children. So let's take a closer look. First, let's look at a game called Tatkusk. Tatkusk involved a hoop made from wild grapevine that was rolled along the ground. While the hoop was rolling, you would try to throw a dart through the hoop and that would help train uh, young boys for hunting. Um, the darts could be anywhere from four inches to about a foot and a half, like this set of darts here, or it could be the length of a spear, about three or four feet. During the winter, when the Lenape were spending more time inside by the fire, they would play games of chance, like Mamantuin. Mamantuin is a dice game played by two players or two teams. Very often the clans would play against each other. There are five or seven dice in the game and they could be made out of different materials, whatever was available. Um, our game is made from peach pits with one side colored and the other side uncolored but they could also be made but from plum pits pieces of deer bone or slices of deer antler or shells you also need a bark bowl or something similar to toss the dice with and a blanket to toss the dice on so the players take turns each player chooses a color and puts the dice into the bowl they toss the dice into the air so that they land on the blanket. To score, you would count how many dice of your color landed face up, and that, would, that was your score. You would get one point for each die that lands with the color that you picked facing upward. But today, we're going to make and play a game called Selatinaliten, or pickup sticks. So for this, uh, traditionally, you need 50 to 65 sticks of bog grass or reeds, um, and you would mark 15 of them with pigment paint or by wood burning, um, and leave the rest undecorated. 
for our toddlers in pre-K, we are going to start with 20, and we're going to use whatever we can find around the house. I have um, some popsicle sticks, so I'm going to use those, and I have some markers. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate five of these. I'm going to mark them on both sides so whichever way they land will be able to see it. Do lines. I saw some dots on some of them. All right, so I have my five decorated pickup sticks. So in a traditional game, you would um, use the porcupine quills to collect your sticks and score your points. The undecorated sticks are one point, and the decorated sticks are five points. You can keep track of that score with counters or with um, you know tallies on a piece of paper. So that way, especially for our pre-K, this can be a counting lesson as well as um, practicing our fine motor skills. Um, so obviously I don't recommend playing, with, playing this with a, a porcupine quill, especially with our young ones. They are rather pokey. <laughs> um, so instead for our little ones, we can once we drop the sticks, we can either just try and pick them up with our fingers or for our pre-K, if you want to get a little more advanced, we can try a pair of tweezers. All right, and the last thing we need for our game is a blanket to play on. All right, so I'm going to mix up my sticks. And we're going to drop them. This, at the start of each turn, you're going to pick up a stick without touching or disturbing any of the other sticks. And you keep going and keep picking them up. Without touching or disturbing any of the other sticks. But when you do disturb them, your turn is over and it's the next player's turn. So this, as I said, this is great uh, fine motor skill practice as well as good counting practice. So give it a try, have some fun with it. As it gets colder and we're starting to spend more time inside, now's a good time to try out some new games. We're creating some of our own. Small Explorers, thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, you deserve to be treated with respect. You matter and your family matters. So stay safe and keep learning. I'll see you next time.